So one of the main motives in this piece is uh, a Moravian hymn, uh, Join We All With One Accord. Um, and when I started research for this piece, I went to the Moravian archives uh, to look for a hymn. I knew I wanted to use a Moravian hymn. Um, and as it turns out, this is one of only a handful of hymns, I think there may be five or six, that started out in the Czech Republic in the original Bohemian Brethren 15th, 16th century hymnal, um, and then moved to Germany when the Moravians went there, um, and, and Austria and uh, that area at the time, and then finally, ultimately, came with the Moravians to the American hymnal. Um, and it's, it, you know, again, it's one of the few that does that, uh, and I thought it was particularly uh, cool just considering our itinerary. Our itinerary. Um, but it's also, I guess more importantly, just a beautiful hymn. So this is the first line of that hymn. Um, it appears mostly in the music in the wind part, so this will be played by uh, French horn and clarinet. So that happens um, literally a few times throughout the piece, and it also happens um, in different fragments and, and just bits of the melody kind of weave in and out of the texture. Um, but it also kind of sets, um, sets the, the base for uh, this technique which I used in this piece, um, which is slightly um, unconventional, something that the players are, are not as used to playing, um, and it took a little working out. Um, but basically what it is, is the players are given notes and they're given the phrase like they would with uh, any other piece of music, but the tempo and the time and the rhythm um, are all to be played at the player's discretion. And what this does is it gives a very wishy-washy, cloudy effect. So that's what this sounds like. <laughs> sets up um, this, this pad, this sort of palette of sound that then later things that are in time or other things that are sort of out of time but competing with or playing against uh, this motive can um, interact with. But it also keeps this original pitch set, this, uh, these notes that happened at the chorale in the beginning in the listener's ear so it's, it's recognizable when it comes back at the end. Uh, so the other main motive that kind of comes in and out and weaves through the texture of this piece is a, a Hungarian children's song, um, which I can't pronounce. Uh, but it uh, comes back and it actually, it, it starts the piece um, and it ends the piece and it comes in and out of the piece. But it's most literally heard um, at B. Actually, uh, it has a number of connections to the hymn melody, which is kind of cool. Um, but when I was reading about Hungarian music and the folk songs, um, how it's rigged is you'll have a melody that plays, and then the melody will be transposed, played at a higher pitch level, generally um, at the interval of a fourth or a fifth up. And so this is what it sounds like, just lined up uh, in fifths. So that gives it a slightly richer texture, but even that can't necessarily sustain itself for very long. So what ultimately happens is the, the two entrances get staggered um, and they interrupt each other and kind of play around with each other. Most clearly happens right here at 